everybody. This is Richie from the Metal Cell Podcast. I want to do a shout out to a new sponsor on the show, Rising Sons Brewery from Cork, one of our own. So this is the first time it's been announced on the show. So I'm really excited to have Rising Sons on board. And if any of you don't know what happened, it's just a conversation with Benny. And he is a real passionate fan of music in general. And I pitched him the show, told him what I was doing, and uh, he was really enthusiastic about it. So we had a discussion about it and just kind of outlined both our ideas for where the show is going. And so, yeah, so he's on board with it. And uh, he has, if, for people that don't know Benny, he's got like the Cork Heritage pubs around Cork. He's got what, around 20 pubs, I suppose, and they're all really class places. So it's Rising Suns. Mm -hmm that are coming behind myself and Pat on the Smashing Skull session. So just one. Yeah. Fair fucking play, Class. man. Yeah. yeah. Isn't congrats. It's awesome. That's some that's some hustling right there. Yeah. Hustling so there's, the there's grave, some babe. Yeah, there's some exciting things uh being planned yeah. on the way. So and we all get free drink forever, which is class. There you go. <laughs> yeah. We'll all have to have little metal cell ID pass cards. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. So I just you, you mean you don't know who I am like I'm Richie friend like <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so I'm delighted with that. Uh, two and a half years, uh, two and a half, three years of grafting. So it's, it's good to get a reward and cover my costs eventually. So you can buy the second house now with all that money, like second yeah. helicopter, Ed. <laughs> second helicopter. Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just back from damnation. Will I talk about that, or do you want to talk about a few yeah, other let's, things? Let's hear. Let's hear the damnation report. Yeah. Um. So Friday we went across to see uh, Night of Salvation. That was literally a last minute decision because we lost the sea. We're going to play departure songs. If you haven't heard of departure songs, um, boy, we lost the sea. It's one of those post metal classic, post rock classics. It's always name checked. And that was the selling point for me. Pat has always gone on about it in the Smash and Skull sessions. And uh, very so, Pat band, to be fair, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> That's like, yeah, screams so, Pat. Like. So the lads are from Australia. And the, the bands on the night were Mastiff, who I watched. They were fucking amazing. And I'm glad to say they're coming on the show uh, sometime Ooh. in December. Unreal. Yeah, uh, Pupil Slicer, seen them. For Fucking the amazing, man. Everyone loves Pupil Slicer. Everyone yeah. loves Pupil Slicer. Pupil Slicer are sick. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I've seen them twice now, and it's just the type of music that, I mean, there's nothing the fault for them as a band in delivery and stuff, but they're not my cup of tea, but I can... They went down a storm. They're really, really good live, but just... Yeah, they're making waves, man. They are, yeah. Yeah, then Ithaca, another huge, band. huge support for them. And then, as I said, we lost the sea. It was mind-blowing. We were up the front for that. And the lads joined us for beers afterwards, which was really cool. nice. And then Celeste ended the night. They're, Class. For those that know, know Celeste, they're absolutely yeah. amazing. I suppose they'd fall into the kind of early Gojira territory. Would that be fair yeah. enough? Some heavy hitters there already. Like mm, it was an amazing night. Yeah, yeah. The setup was really, really good, and I suppose because they were only using one stage, which was, um, I think it was called maybe the altar. It's kind of the second biggest stage there. Mm. Uh, what was, was the a, What was the arena set up like then, Richie? Because you've been to Damnation before, haven't you? In in Leeds. No, uh, that's Danielle. Yeah, I was in Leeds. Yeah. Um, it was like, as they were saying, Danielle, it was always a bit of a nightmare trying to get around the place, wasn't it? It no, was. Not with this. Yeah. Um, yeah, the lads said it was way easier this year compared oh, yeah. to last year. Yeah. The, the venue itself, just to give you an idea, I don't think you could actually walk there. From where, though? If you were next door, you could definitely you, walk. You'd need to be kind of maybe at the Trafford Centre where we were where there's yeah. a few hotels and that walk was 30 minutes. But going back, it could be a bit scary because it's in the middle of an industrial estate. So it's really, really out there on its own. There's no food venues or shops nearby. So but are you, Richie, are you saying that you wouldn't walk there? Because I remember when we went to see Turnstile, 
And I was like, look, we'll walk to Camden. You were not fucking walking, Evan. Jesus I, get my fuck, I get my steps in, my man. Yeah. I, you, it was like, granted, look, granted, we walked the complete wrong way. So yeah. we added about 20,000 steps <laughs> no, onto it. Yeah, yeah, we added an extra 30 minutes onto it. But we so. looked so fit when we got there. <laughs> the Sweaty. Episode, the exercise for the week was done. That was before we even saw Turnstile. Like, look, it's, it's just old, it's different when you get older. Like me and Richie have only so many steps left. Like, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a countdown of steps. <laughs> like, uh... like my my fucking runners had tongues hanging out of them, Joe. When we arrived, eventually shouldn't Canada. have brought shit shoes. So, <laughs> but yeah. So look, that's just one one aspect of it. Like coming out of there at night time. Um, if there was excessive amounts of people, um, it could be ropey enough. Okay. Um, the the sound in there for the Friday night was incredible. It was the second main stage and absolutely faultless. Really liked the look of it for the Saturday. And there was no problem with toilets. There was no problem getting served with food or not food, but drink, I should say. The drink was class. Loads of selection there. And everything yeah. was... Uh, you got sponsorship as well, did they? Or am I making that up from something? Uh, I see that. I might be mi- mixing it up with something else now. But sponsorship for drinks, is it? Yeah, like they got... I remember they were saying something about like getting the... There's a double point there oh, for like... we had the double Yeah, yeah they got some kind of... Yeah, like some the deal that they were doing as well. Fair play yeah. to them. So the whole night was absolutely amazing. I couldn't fault that that was the Friday night. Then the Saturday, then, of course, you have an extra 4,000 people coming in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm the, guessing the, the there was roughly number. two thousand Friday night. There mightn't have been, but it was close. Gavin, we met Gavin, top mm-hmm. dude. He was flying around the place. There was no problem. You could get a photograph of him, a chat. He was he was really really nice about everything for anybody that needed help or it just uh, just to bug him for a picture. Even I met the razor sharp dead blizzard lads there Legend. as well. Cool. Yeah, it was really Legend. nice. That was uh, Friday night. So then Saturday we arrived because I wanted to see Brewer at one o'clock and there was a massive change in just the size of the crowd going in there. It was just like, wow. So um, we got to see Brewer in the, the, the ice, I call it the ice or stage, which is the smallest mm-hmm. stage. And we were just blasted out of it the whole time by um, strobes. strobes. Oh my I fucking heard that. God. It was mental. I, I, look, basically, I just stared my, at my feet for most of that show. Was it but that, it, like, literally that much strobe that yeah, you're like, it was just couldn't ridiculous. handle it? Like, I heard I mean, that. Look, the band could have been asking for that. I don't know. I, I can't say. Apparently, it. they were, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's that's good. You know, I remember seeing the strokes actually, and they did it, and it was incredibly off button. Like, it was just really hard to enjoy the gig. You know, was that for every music. song, Joe? Every single song. Jesus you know, I think Christ. sometimes people in, invest in this fucking super expensive shit and then they're just like, better use it. You yeah. Mm. Trobe's like this, like. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, the, the weather was shit on Saturday, which didn't help matters either. There seems to be, there seemed to be cues um, for a lot more um food the food was actually in place and there was a lot more queues going on there so it didn't really affect us because we had a good breakfast but um by the time i saw we lost the sea i was kind of getting a bit hungry we lost the sea and were brilliant but again the same problem with just non-stop strobing right through their set uh, just crazy and there was a, a band on after them and it was the same thing i was just going fucking hell <laughs> like, relax yeah, yeah um, actually, was there not um joe you might know i remember maybe so hideous a years ago there was like like a time limit like a, maybe it's not like a legal time limit but of how long you can leave strobes going at a gig i'm not 100 percent sure i know that like even if you think of what percentage of the population is uh some form of epilepsy okay. or something like that you know some even photosensitive problem you would just think even if it was two percent, you're still going to be upset and some yeah. people massively, you know. Mm. Yeah. And you know what? I, I'm fine stuff, with you know? strobes. I'm actually fine until I got subjected to this. Like it's just <laughs> mental. Um, but usually they don't have them like, like facing directly forward. They'll have them like you know angled downwards, so it gives you the effect without kind of fucking blinding your face. You know. Yeah. There was just 
I th- a shitload of them, way too many, I thought. Um, so anyway, it went back into Pins and Knuckles stage, and that was Insanity Alert, Joe. They were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they're great crack. Have you played with them before? Yeah, we uh, did a tour with them in Japan in 2019. What? Yeah, and they, did, they did a tour with us in um, wherever else, uh, Europe. But they're, they're lovely guys. We've known them for ages. Like The, the lead singer looked exactly... Like Roman Polanski as well. So he does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was shocked that they were from Austria, actually, but uh, they had the crowd in their hands. See, that's my whole point. Like, if you have, say, two or three trash bands in a festival like this, it's going to be fun. They bring the fun element to gigs. Yeah, yeah. Very after that, so. there was just all really, really serious um, bands on. That was just my own opinion of it. Uh, Pig Destroyer were on the Pins and Knuckles. <laughs> Such a good band. Yeah, uh, I watched them and My Dying Bride, Godflesh, At The Gates, all those I thought uh, suffered because the arena was so big in relation to the vocalists. The vocals were missing a lot of the... The washed or... Yes. Yeah. How full did it, uh, did it seem then, Richie? Because I know there was some rumblings about like X hundred people not being able to get there because of the train strikes and all that kind of crack. Like. I'd, say, oh. I'd say nearly 90% full, Joe. Really, really I think busy. it's all it's all it's sold out. I think in the end, yeah, yeah. 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 But then you've people like me who couldn't go that had mm. tickets. But yeah, the only thing I didn't find, um, well, I did find it strange actually because I, I, it's not something I do anyway. Is there was actually no place for people to sit. Okay, yeah. so if you're sitting, you're sitting on cold concrete ground. Yeah. And there was yeah. there was a lot of people sitting on cold concrete ground. You have no choice, like. Yeah, you have no yeah. choice. That was just one thing. Primavera is like that, you know? And I think that is something that people kind of forget if you're doing an all-day event, especially selling food and stuff like that. You don't really want to have to stand about, you know? Yeah. So uh, the, the place I couldn't think of was the Holy Goat. That was the other main place. So we saw Wolves in the Throne Room there. They were excellent. Um, there was a lot of bands there, Incantation, what Misery Index, the Spies Icon. So, like, they were all really, really jammed, you know. Yeah, for... I can imagine Misery Index, Misery Index, especially. Yeah. I'd say it was a big deal. Like, yeah, but but as I said, going back to my point was we had our breakfast at ten, and we like come six o'clock after just so much beer, and I was just so fucking hungry, you know. Just went queuing, and it was then. The problems could be seen why there was no just, just no fucking moving in the crowd just we just stood there for 30 minutes my mate fucked off i waited another 10 minutes going it has to move and it just didn't and so you know then you're really hungry then you're sober from kind of waiting around for That's so long the worst part as well yeah and it's raining and you're just going for fuck's sake like so yeah I didn't, I eventually got food at nine o'clock that night, but I mean, for fuck's sake, like from 10 o'clock that morning. Yeah, I'm a fat bastard now, so I need I need food to function, to move around. Yeah. (laughs) But everybody. Festivals and stuff, I do the same. Like, I'll I'll eat. Regardless of, you know, having the crack, getting moldy, doing everything, I will still eat three times. Yeah. At a festival or anything. Like, I I'm aware of what my body can and can't do and what it needs to do mm. other things. And food yeah. is an absolute necessity. Like. Now, that's not that nation's fault. That's the vendor's yeah. fault. Um, yeah. But Jesus Christ almighty, that was such I a think, like, though, there's probably, there is something in it in the sense that like at Damnation, even though there were probably more places to eat, it's always <laughs> been a problem around dinner time. There's been massive queues or they run out of food and stuff like that. So a lot of it is probably like metal fans you know they're sitting around all day boozing and then same as yourself everybody at the strike at six o'clock says i want something to eat you know it's time to go yeah 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 it might say in between bands as well as like you kind of find out joe was busy all day man because because we were in and out looking at the merch getting beer it was just busy most of the time like you're you're talking about six thousand people and i think there was maybe 10 caterers right with just small trucks and they weren't big what were what was this is such a nerdy but like, what was pricing wise like um, 80 for, euro i think was it for no the beer I the food. food jesus oh. the food was okay <laughs> <laughs> so the 80 for euro for food. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell i might as well do you the week <laughs> yeah i think it was around eight pounds or ten pounds for pizza that's all i was looking for ah, that's actually yeah that's, yeah that's not too bad that's okay yeah 100%. Mm. 
yeah. So <laughs> overall, um, yeah, trying to get out of there again. We left before the main headliner came on because we were just going after two days of it and just wanted to get out of there. I wasn't going to take a chance fighting with thousands for taxes. You didn't so. see Converge, though? No, I didn't see the Converge, no. Ooh, moly. Yeah, I know. I know, but I was in there at one o'clock, you see, Eden, and just... Um, yeah, but every, look, you know what? It was a success, I'm sure. They'll take on board what people were cribbing about. The people were looking for water, and they were able to get it in some places, some places hadn't it but they're all small teething problems you know there was yeah. overall the, i think the sound wasn't the best in the main stage for the vocalists that's basically it because of the height of the venue and it's a it's a tin roof it become the, very washy and just yeah. lost and it must be, like was originally like a boxing arena or something if it's mm -hmm. like an industrial area yeah Maybe that was it. and as i said the other stages there was none, none of that there in the holy goat and the eyesore just just perfect in there yeah. So here, um, Evan, how was the worn out Irish tour? Genuinely, um, it it felt like it was like a pivotal kind of thing for us. Uh, like it was, it it was absolutely fantastic. To be honest, every single gig, uh, we had great crowds. Um, it's what like how do I describe it now? It was just one of those things that like, we'll say pre and post COVID, like all the work that we had done during covid and then waste coming out and the build up and like the last year that we've had like coming with this with this tour was just like we're we were fucking beaming every single night um we would have done fire we would have done another 400 gigs given the opportunity uh just it just really felt um like no i don't want to be saying like oh we've moved up or we're whatever like we are a better band but I feel like either people that weren't paying attention to us mm. are now paying attention to us or at least curious enough to check us out out of, you know, like word of mouth kind of thing. It's like, you know, feel very much our own band at this stage. So. Yeah. And then yeah. um, in Dublin, man, what a class we venue that is. Like. That was of like how I felt like we played or how I played, that was my favorite. And that was actually the best on stage sound that I had. It That's like, awesome. it was just, what I think it's like a hundred cap. It's, <laughs> it's so hectic everywhere, you know? And they have tables that they can't move. Cause we got in there and we were like, Hey, saying to the promoter, Mikey is like, dude, you got to move those tables. Like I'm telling mm -hmm. you now, they're going to be a hazard, but they ended up being like, instead of people like getting on the stage to stage dive, <laughs> people got on the tables to stage dive. So it worked out, you know, whatever way. Were it those tables that were screwed into the floor? Like? Oh, they're screwed in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we saw them were like, they okay. also had candles everywhere <laughs> as well. And we got in, we're like, lads, get rid of the candles. I can't. And like the candles were gone. Before, uh, Lorin started playing, and mm. like, you'd say it was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your performance at the siege was just exceptional, uh, fantastic, reception. fantastic reception. Yeah, it was, I think the siege very much felt like kind of. Again, it's not an ego thing. It's more, if it was me on my own standing there, it'd be different. But as a unit, uh. It, it just it just felt like a lot of things had had built up to that and like mm. very proud of the lads and what we've done and what we plan to do and the things that we have coming up but it, yeah it was very like one of those moments that it's only after like so we brought all the gear back to Cork kind of straight after but it was kind of sitting in the car um oh you know when we got like pictures and stuff the next day I was kind of looking at like the size of the crowd and the fact that, like, at the siege, we had like front pits, we had middle pits, yeah. and it was like a tiny little back pit and stuff as well. And it's kind of like to get that reaction is not something that we're we take for granted, but that's a testament to your hard work and doing it the right way, being professional about it, you know. I, and everything yeah, no, you do, it, it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, it's like, no, we fucking we work our asses off, like. yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, and everyone was so good to us at the siege as well everyone bought merch and 
yourself included. Like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, not that I remember buying it. But anyway, thanks for well, you actually heads up. pre-ordered it. But I I brought it to you. But you okay. were like, what what T-shirt? I was like, <laughs> fuck, I'll resell it to you. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I no, really like the given the, given the condition I was in at that stage. Yeah, yeah. What, Speaking of conditions, early. Danielle, <laughs> what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> well, at least you were there, weren't you? <laughs> in spirit. What are you talking about? What does that even mean? Hey, come on, come means... on! Now. I'm slating you. That's what I meant. I'm slating you here. No, oh, we got yeah. that. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought I was in a perfect bit of health at the siege. You know, <laughs> and yeah, every single interaction that we had, and I feel like, like, I think Joe. Maybe it's just me. It's probably just me. But before playing a gig, I'm so bad at keeping like conversations or like, mm. it's like ADD comes out two hundred percent because I'm already thinking about six hours ahead of what I have to do. But mm-hmm. every single time that I saw you, you were the most lovely person. I, you were just like, I'd literally see you from the corner and it'd be like this. <laughs> 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 and I, I'd like fucking make my way through people being like, I'm getting that hug. I'm like, <laughs> every time, like every single time. Yeah. That was brilliant. And um, the fact that you'd never seen Paratalon either, Daniel. So I, I good. Did- so oh, me, good. they were class. I yeah. actually, I didn't get to talk to many people from what I can remember at the siege because I was, I, I was so busy at bands, yeah. so busy, it yeah. was packed. Um, but Jesus, Parthlon were fucking unbelievable. Howard crowd surfing. I think his like headstock got stuck just <laughs> on the upstairs stage, and I was listening to it being like, "This is going to be so out of tune now because there's no way if that was us, if someone looks at a, like the headstock, it go." <laughs> But that's our look. But he got up and he just kept playing, and it just sounded incredible. Still, like you know, mm-hmm. their their bassist. I know James Cody's not playing with them now. I can't remember the new bassist name. It's Barry, what? isn't it? From Skellig. is it Barry? Yeah, yeah. What a fucking tank! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what an absolute like that man. There was the tune. I, don't, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like they do this thing where it's like a circular riff, and then they stop. And come in on yeah. like the like the like the two of the four bar, mm. but they do it like sixteen times. So it's yeah. you're kind of like it gets to a point it. like yeah you're getting to this point that you're like oh they're just going to keep doing this and then when it they actually don't do it again you're like you actually fucked me there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I remember watching that being like that's sneaky on me. <laughs> they do it for so long that you're like you fall into the groove of like. Hey, Killing it, yeah. and, and every they song they played it, like, was was new. new. Every one of them, yeah. Because you, I, I do remember you were like to be rich. You're like they're going to end in Jerusalem, and I'm like they're going to end in Jerusalem, and they didn't. And then they didn't, and I was like, ah. Oh. But the song they ended it was fucking <laughs> was excellent, class. anyways. Yeah, and of yeah, course she was yeah. up the front for Grace Stag as well. In her so element. good, people came up She's to so me and were like, good. They were like. Oh, you're the girl that was at the front for Grey Stag. You were going mad for Grey Stag, like these random people you, I never met before. You and Pete were like this. It was say, I actually looked at Pete because uh, I was kind of like at the front to the side, and like I could just see like Pete like this being like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're fucking getting me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their new stuff was deadly. Mm-hmm. Ah, they're just they're just ridiculous, like. Do you know who's a band that's really on a, a, tra- a trajectory at the moment that um that War, I've War heard around? No? Uh, trench knife. Oh my! There's God. a trench knife buzz about so them at the moment. Yeah, yeah. There's a buzz about so them, good. and they Big were excellent. The knife, boys. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was uh, chatting to like the lads afterwards, and one of the lads was like, "Who was that band that had a head in a spike?" <laughs> I was like, "Trench knife." Trench, yeah, yeah, yeah. class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was loads of highlights yes, in the so. siege. It was great. It was just an absolutely fantastic day. So sending the love to John, Kieran, and every and his team. Brilliant job. Team. Below the neck uh, and Lorraine as well. I'm absolutely talking about their sets. Go on. Both Go bands on. were fucking. I don't know. Did you catch yep. Lorraine? But yeah, I didn't see him. Fucking ridiculous. Lorraine mm. are one of those bands that you could put on at nine a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and they will have people that are like, do you know what? Fuck it, I'm going. I'm, I'm going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, below the neck, we're sick, and yeah. I just like, you know, we had the tour with the lads, but I just I need to 
acknowledge him. Neil Holm, how good of a... They had a great tour was the last that, they? They in Ireland. Yeah, they were really uh, happy. Yeah, they had ma- like people knew the fucking words to some below the neck tunes. Like, oh, like people were singing it back, and I'm like, that's that nuts. shit. This is why I love bringing bands over to Ireland. It's like I don't think we realize how much of a engaged community that we have. Like, even yeah. below the neck, I got a a message from a, a guy that works in a coffee at uh, Three Fools. Uh, when he saw that, like, you know, the lads had landed, he messaged me being like, let the below the neck lads know that if they come in to us, they'll get free coffee. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> As in, I, I hadn't talked yeah. to him about it before. He said, oh, I heard them on Spotify. But just the Irish hospitality is second to none. And I think the lads saw that. And even I was surprised by some people uh, around Ireland now during that tour that were just so nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Right, we'll move on. Uh, first single is a band called Fierce Shook. And it's called Luthite. The band wrote and recorded the single during the lockdown in 2021. And although the music came together through a mix of online collaborations and recordings in separate home studios, it still manages to capture the sound and energy of the band's live performances. Uh, Fair Shook was initially started as a solo recording project by Rob Moore. The lineup expanded to a three piece in 2021, following requests from to start playing gigs based on the strength of the music that had been released to date. So Owen, Ozzy, and Rob worked together for years writing and recording material before this, before COVID, I suppose. So they would describe themselves as a punk band in the sense that they're working independently within the constraints giving whether it's time or money or to create music that we want to hear so it's not about playing to the cliches of the genre i also think or this is rob's words i also think that working in a small town away from any major music scene has helped us craft something different so let's see what you think it is so this is fear shook Okay, Ev, we'll start with you. Uh, I think the first thing, like even reading the EPK will say that said, like, you know, the small town thing. There is like musically, instrumentally, so down my alley for a lot of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you get like the Curb Dog vibe, Laminate that used to be a band in Ireland that were incredible. Uh, like you know, Ruben and like again, Chemical Addiction, yeah, like that kind of vibe. Musically, it really like I was like, "Fuck, this is really good." Vocally, really needs a lot of a lot of work on it. I feel like there is more emphasis on trying to get like a raspy tone out of the voice rather than hit the correct notes and like finding. It's like doing an accent rather than hit the notes, but yeah, if, I know, I know of, you're saying it's under screaming trees, kind of. Yeah, yeah, and there's a there's a helmet vibe yeah. kind of or helmet influence kind of thing. I thought like you know, 
90s or early 2000s yeah. kind of alternate like I love that shit uh, mm-hmm. and like a lot of time when I was listening to it I was kind of like focusing on the music because the vocals they can, they really do let it down but in saying that you know they're a three piece great songwriters everything um, but if they get one guy to go in or to do vocals or if they had two guitarists and one of them was a better vocalist like don't worry about like the tone and if you sound like kind of raspy or not or whatever like it, I feel like if he pushes his voice in a way that he's not trying to sound we'll say grungy mm. this band really has the potential to be ridiculously good Yeah. but at the minute I think the vocals I'm like, I feel like I'm listening to it like this, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But very, very much would like to see where these guys go. Musically, fucking, I'm really behind it, like. Yeah. Joe? Um, yeah, like, it definitely sounded very sub-pop to me, you know, yeah. musically. Very sub-pop, yeah. Like, <clears throat> what you were saying, Ev, about Curb Dog and stuff, that this mm-hmm. was very, very popular music in Ireland from, like, the mid-90s until about 2005. Yeah. So there's probably, like, a whole bunch of people in Dublin and Belfast who would come to gigs for this kind of thing. But I would agree with Ev as well in the sense that I think the vocals are probably supposed to be kind of, you know, under the bridge, annoying kind of, like, the tone of them is, so, is supposed to be sort of, I don't know. But, yeah, it doesn't work for me, look. Like, it whenever they said avoiding cliches it's weird the way like they're looking at cliches it's something and i'm looking at what they're doing vocally being all like oh yeah that's a bit of a cliche trying to like, copy in it or whatever you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah like musically very 90s and stuff um but, yeah next okay daniel yeah um the intro reminded me very foo fighters kind of um but I, I enjoyed it. I actually kind of thought the vocals, like, it was what they were going for. You know, I, I thought it, I thought it worked, personally. Um, it doesn't, though. In my personal opinion, it does. Fair, <laughs> um, fair, fair. Um, but I kind of felt like there was almost, like, a, something missing from, like, maybe, like, the chorus, something a little, like, ho- hook it in a little bit more, have something a little bit more to it. But there's definitely... Um, there's definitely not there that I liked, um, and I suppose Joe, like you, probably were around around that the time where this was out there a lot, and it was well, an oversaturated really market. Obvious. Um, but it's it's I suppose there's not a lot, there's not a whole pile of people doing this type of thing at the moment. And it has uh, it certainly has a lot more personality than like some of the other stuff. Like you get a lot of stuff that sounds like either new metal or like very modern. At least this does stand out from the crowd, you know. Us, yeah. I really can't stress enough how I feel like if these guys like kind of hone things in, I feel like they could be like if they can get a really good chorus in there as well. Yeah. Um, you know, like work work on the melody itself. because yeah. uh, the musicianship is so there. Like it's it's nice to hear a track like that because I haven't heard yeah, something like that in a while. Yeah. You know, as you said, yeah. chemical addiction would be a good um to they, they'd at. be a great support for yes, there you go. Kind of election. And it's what about the name? Any, any thoughts on the name? Fear Shook. Fear Shook. Well, everyone's going to say Fear Shite, aren't they? Realistically, like <laughs> everyone's <laughs> going to, everyone's just going to well, say no, that. No, no, really, but now that you mentioned it, I think sometimes like <laughs> Irishism <laughs> in like Fear Shook is good though. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's, like, it's not. It's there's oh, geez, I'm Fear Shook. Yeah. I mean, my band's called Worn Out, so yeah. No, I think Fear Shook is good name. Okay. Okay, so next track is Inoshi, So Beautiful. I'm, I presume I'm pronouncing that right. Inoshi, yeah? Or is it Inoshi? Is a metal band from Dublin, Ireland, with members originating from different countries <coughs> who gathered together to mix their ideas and influences to create songs with heavy riffs and deep atmospheres with an abrasive sound. This November the 1st, which is just gone, will be released in their first single, So Beautiful. The song tries to show the anger of people realizing living in a well-structured system of lies. The song was written by the band and produced and engineered by Jin, who is a member of the band in his home studio in Dublin. So shout out to Nick, Jay, Jin and Javier on rhythm guitars as well there. So we'll give it a spin. Why? I was blind. This really face that shows me all the lies. Blue 
Daniel's gun on my dad. I just limited the amount I can play. Uh, Daniel, did you enjoy it? Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought, I think there's a lot of bands kind of doing similar stuff to this at the moment in Ireland. Um, I know maybe kind of a bit of words that burn, survivalist, survivalist yeah. t- type. But I think this is kind of fresh. I think it's 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 not like, you know, they all, they all are distinct in their own way, but um, there's the, you can definitely hear like elements of um of their influences in in there um but yeah i, I that's their that's the only one song of theirs i could find in spotify and i'd definitely be interested to hear more i, re- I really enjoyed it um i saved it so it's always a good sign you, girl. Yeah. um yeah this kind of music that doesn't ha- like have a backbeat is getting quite popular isn't it like it's weird whenever you think about music before rock and roll like tend to not really be the focus on like you know four counts and like kick and snare being sequential the problem i have with a lot of this kind of stuff it sounds really heavy which is great but the singing like i've never heard a band doing this kind of thing who've had you know a totally different kind of singer it always tends to be super aggro and the other thing that i don't like about it is that a lot of the time whenever the riff is just totally following the kick drum you know where like there like there's only so many beats that you can do where it hasn't been done because the riff tends to be like e or like it'll be two or three notes but the chugs are just following what the kick does. So I, can, I find it quite interchangeable, a lot of the music, you know? Mm. Yeah. So that's it. He has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Evan. Yeah, yeah, like I I guess like even to kind of work backwards on what Joe was saying, I understand the kick matching thing, but I guess with the kick matching thing is almost like, the whole thing that keeps that tight is the, you know, the chicken neck shit. So it's like, doom, 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 doom. There is a lot of like, there's only so many rhythms you can write and everything. But with this band, I think what they do, they, it, it's the recording sounds tight as fuck. Yeah. Um, again, this stuff for me, I feel like can be very like a guy in his bedroom that has all the plugins in the world can make it sound like fucking periphery, kind of like, you know, or, or six, like, you know, it'd be like, oh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. But um, this is something that I will be like, yeah, unreal. Like if I can see this live and it's to the same scale, because it has happened before that, like I'll hear bands that just are like these guys, you know, like almost like I don't listen to them, but I keep getting told to listen to Lorna Shore. And I feel like there's a level of that um, that I'm like, if I ever see Lorna Shore live, like in a few years, I'll be the guy jumping on the bandwagon years after being like, do you ever hear Lorna Shore? And everyone's like, oh, we're done with that. We've, we've yeah. moved on. But uh, like, it's very slightly adjacent to stuff that I would listen to. It's a bit more kind of deathcore-esque. But Which is really big at the moment. Deathcore is the blowing moment. up around the I'm not a massive, person. like, specific deathcore dude. In fact, I don't know if there's any deathcore bands that I would listen to. I respect it. I get it. But um, I think I'm just kind of like... If I see this band live and they, it, they sound like that, I'll be like, yeah, cool. One of the tightest bands in Ireland, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, really, really impressed me. Um, I, Very I like good. hearing. I like hearing yeah. new stuff like that. Um, it's not something that I'm into, but when I, when I hear it, I can understand. And it's not um, black metal leader, which is class. No, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, big thumbs up there from me as well on that one. Yeah, okay. I give a thumbs up anyway. Yeah. Okay. So next track is Elder Witch. Elder Witch are an Irish symphonic horror metal triarchy <laughs> hailing from the east, west, and north of Ireland. They're literally a triangle of terror. Formed in January 2022, Elder Witch is composed of Venus Malfica on both. I knew it. I knew I heard that voice. Was was she on Al- uh, the, uh, as, Yeah, as, what was the that we were Shiree. Really yeah. Uh, Shiree, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I was like, it fucking one hundred percent is. I knew it. Um, Sorry, yeah. you, No, no. Al Breitsch, Moonheim, the third on bass and guitars, and Vinifius. Temporis on drums. Jesus Christ. Like, why Wait, do they always is, send this? Your crazy? Is, is it the turd? The turd. The third. <laughs> the third. 
third of his name. A third oh, of his the name. Third. Okay, I thought I thought there was the a third moon helm. The third. <laughs> <laughs> While <laughs> epic horror teen metal might not be might not be everybody's stipple of choice, elder which are known to wet their whistles with a deviant array of genres, everything from <coughs> cultish lo-fi black metal, gothic doom, vampiric punk, and the shameless desecration of classical greats. Elder Witch or audio whores. If it's a gruesome, grotesque, and grand <laughs> in sound, it's Elder Witch. Uh, the members have been prowling around the Irish and international metal scene, respectively, for over a decade. Ambitious and vicious, keep a close watch on Elder Witch, for they'll be watching you. Man, what a great intro to the track okay. so this is uh the old ones <laughs> Okay, Joe. Yeah, like, I don't know. I'd be very embarrassed if that was the chorus of my song, to be honest with you. Like, she's a really good singer, but, like, this sort of music is insanely popular in Europe. Like, people feckin' awesome. love it over there, like, you know, so you can see this, this immediately doing well, but, like, it just it doesn't work for me at all. Like, I think she, like, you can tell she's a great singer, but, like, I don't know. Definitely not for me. Okay. Daniel, this stuff usually is not at all my bag, but it's it's catchy and it's fun. Like you know, it's not. I don't think it's. I I think it's self aware. Like you know, I think like, Joe, you know, if you're if you've had a few drinks, you're watching that live, and she's a great singer. Um, it's not the subject matter. Crack. I think that I love like horror and schlocky stuff and like yeah. songs yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant, great. It's just more that. It's like a very eel stormy, like, yeah. you know, let's drink out of fucking horns type vibe, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's not usually my thing. That 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 song is catchy, but um yeah, as you said, Joe, that would do very well in Europe. Certain yep. festivals I could see people going mad for that, like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. F? Yeah, it's cheesy as fuck, man. Um I don't know if you remember, I think Jack was on the podcast at the time, but I was talking about, I don't know if it was Nightwish or some Olympi... Doro. What was it? Doro. Where your man was like <laughs> this revolving thing on a keyboard where like he went behind the drums, like playing keyboard, just being like... Yeah. Like it was literally the cheesiest shit I've ever seen. There, um, But again, people love it. Very, it is very catchy. Um, yeah. not for me, there's a lot of things you can catch, but uh, you know, this is that's good fun, man. I it's mean. very fun, as yeah. in, this is why I'm like, I'm not going to be like, oh, then at the end of the day, people that like this l- love will, will love this. Yeah. Like, if you're into yeah. Nightwish and all that kind of stuff, it's like you, or l- Ailstorm, or Ailstorm. Ailstorm. yeah, you, this is the, pirate metal. That, this is perfect, exactly, I'm not saying, like, copying, or, but, like, this is, you know, for a man that won't listen to that, yeah. like this if, is, they've the reached that level of, yes, that same. What's that, Sorry, Joe? The, uh, there's, like, a ready-made audience of people just mm. waiting to get into this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, and a fantastic yeah. vocalist leading yeah. the way, so, great. Oh, she, she's actually, she's very, like, knows how to make a hook, I believe. Mm. 
uh, the last thing for the Ashiri thing, I was like, wasn't mad into it too much, but she, she can write a hook. I'll give her that. Like she, yeah. she does know how to write write a hook. Not the type of thing I want hooked in me at all. But <laughs> you know, this will be one of those things. I'll wake up in the morning and it's like, yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like, oh Absolutely. my god, I like, I, I'll, I'll end up hating her because <laughs> how good she can write a hook because I, it's not my type of thing. Like. But cool. that's, that's a me issue rather than a, a them issue. Like, yeah. no, it's, it's um, look, we are, I I tell you, fair play to him. That's all I'd say. Yeah, yeah, find the fun. flag for us. Yeah, that type of music. Okay, the track four is the blessing way, and the song is delusions of an opium eater. The blessing way is a symphonic black metal gothic solo project by Ali Gill. He has been working on the project for over four years. Eric's Lament is the name of the album, and it's their second one. It's a concept album based on the Phantom of the Opera, with guest appearance by Snowy Shaw and other singers throughout the album. I presume the rest of them are Irish. It was recorded at Track Mix Studios and mastered by the magician uh, Michael Richards. We'll give this a spin. And, um, yeah, Delusions of an Opium Eater. Great title. Nineties creator, yeah. but, um, it's good though. Like it, I was very surprised that I actually kind of like him. A lot of the the vibe of this, it sort of feels like it's a merciful fate esque kind of thing. Yeah. Like where, but it's a wee yeah. bit heavy on the the raspy vocals. Maybe if there was more high, it would suit it because it is obviously you know theatrical little hat on kind of mm. metal, isn't it? Like, yeah, I'm actually glad that he didn't go high because you know it <laughs> kind of gets iffy for me then when he goes too high, you know. <laughs> the uh, the ripping was good though, wasn't it? Like you yeah. could tell that there were yeah. like, like despite what was going on in the song, there were some serious good guitar players going on there. Very proficient, yeah. Yep. Yeah, well impressed, Dev. Uh yeah, again, I don't think it'd be any surprise it wouldn't be my kind of thing, but uh very good at what they do. It's like a mix of and this I don't know if it's an insult or a compliment to either band, but it's like if the crawling had to write a song with nice Nightwish. Do you know what I mean? There's a uh, and I, I like I yeah. again I fuck it. The crawling are so goddamn yeah. probably the best snare sound I've ever heard live mm-hmm. as well. Uh, but there's there's some kind of thing um, between. It's like if it's a mix of the two, but the crawling are good. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, um, yeah. wouldn't wouldn't be my thing. But again, I'm sure there's lads sitting there that are like. I can't believe you said that. It's like whatever. Um, yeah, very proficient players. Very, and I know I say that all the time, but I can't stress enough how. With me saying that, it's like I'm not shitting on someone. Um, like you can't write a song. It's like the song's not for me. I literally didn't ask to review songs, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Friend of yours. Or yeah, yeah, friend of mine. Yeah, um, yeah. It's I think it's so impressive that that's the solo pro- project. Mm. So it's it's, yeah. it's really really impressive. There's um, there's a kind of an underground goth gothic kind of um 
there's not really a lot of people playing to it, which is interesting. So I think this, I think that there'd be, um, there'd be an audience for this. Um, but I, he said he's not going to play it live. Um, okay. but I thought it was, I thought it was cool. It, it, this particular song actually reminds me of, um, there's a song by Avenged Sevenfold, and they they do it kind of an operatic kind of a thing called a little piece of heaven and i it's one of my favorite Finch sevenfold songs and it reminded me of that um yeah yeah that was pretty cool really yeah. really cool and yeah the, the it's, a, it's a long enough album as well like there's good is it like 13 tracks or something like that oh wow. jesus i'm looking forward to hearing it i'll definitely be checking it out I'm really impressed yeah. with it yeah, yeah. It. like so hard when you're a solo artist just to kind of throw something out and yeah and not there's, even be see part of the scene like to see to see no Sorry, does is Ali part of the metal scene in so far as does he go to gigs and stuff, or is he just? He's facing Galway, like so he'd be mm. up there. Uh, he probably got a few gigs up there, yeah. and they're on in that. Yeah, we're playing bush. on the third of December. If Ali wants to come down, boy. <laughs> Doug, cool. Uh, Big thumbs but, up, anyway. I, I Richie, do you mind if just before we move on from reviews, I know I sent like a screenshot into the group. I believe the last. Forums that we did, I can't even remember what band it is, but one of the members like made a post on Facebook, oh, yeah, giving out about what we said. And oh, uh, yes, uh, sorry, I thought you meant you just I, sent it there. Okay, no, 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 yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I guess this is me just like saying if you want to send a review in here, and this is not me, me being like a dickhead or some kind of hard mm. ass. But if you're going to send your music in to be reviewed and not like what we say, then by all means, keep your music up your own arse because I don't see the point in trying to, like, we're not here to lick anyone's arse. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, but uh, unfortunately, I got like screenshots sent and I sent it to you. Yeah. I can't reply. Not that we mind, but advice that I would give any band if someone doesn't like your music there is literally no band on the entire face of this earth that everybody is going to agree on but if you're giving someone the option to review something and you want to make a bitch and moan because no one bent you over and told you how fucking amazing you are by all means fuck off and I think that's the fairest way I don't know if anyone else has a disagreement on that, but if you're going to send songs in to be reviewed and you don't like how they've been reviewed, well, look, man, you know, you have to. It, it, it's a natural thing. Like you, you don't like getting bad reviews, but at the same time, you're 100 percent correct. It's not you don't have a god given right for people to like your music, you know. So 100 yeah, percent, yeah. That's just that's life. Like you know, yeah, I think like, it's you, I'm not saying you have to that. take it. Like it's like, yeah, but I look. Oh, but you know what? We're a little Facebook status about it, like. Oh yeah, I mean, bitch, fuck like, that. Like, but I mean, yeah, look, fuck, we're yeah. always we're always trying to be positive and try to pick yeah, out the, the good elements. Now, if there's bad element, bad elements, they will be spotted, and you will call it out on it. But ultimately, why we're here is to promote your fucking band, talk about them, and yeah. get your band music played on the show. Okay, yeah. and yeah. I give it to the lads; they have no preconceptions about it. They make a call on the night. It's none. It's not. It's no bullshit. It's either it's good or it's not good. We will try to help you and suggest stuff. And after that, you know, just to fucking start bitching about us on Facebook. Richie, like this is this is an Irish like show, and it does have great reach. But like, it's not as if bands like if you got a bad review and crying, you wouldn't stop sending your album in for a review, would you? You'd yeah, just be exactly. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like and I think it's the same. If that band got a bad review from us and they were bitchy about it, like go and make different music or appeal to someone else. I'm sure they're not fucking worried that like we don't like it, you know. So yeah, they were yeah. that they made a big post about it. But anyway, yeah, it was it was a member of about the like yeah. it was one of those things that the I remember sending it to you. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I don't even want to say what member of what band and what. Yeah, but look, no, leave, leave it out. No, leave no, it. I won't. But like at at the end of the day, it's one of those things. It's like. Honestly, if you want to, like, the more you move up, the more you move up, there will be people that want to shit on you because you're doing good. And if you let that affect you and you let every small little thing 
kind of were like, oh, they didn't, they give me three out of five or like fucking two out of five. What fucking difference does that make for you writing the songs that you want to write? Do you know what I mean? It's like, if you're going to change everything, then to be like, oh, well, like, like imagine if it's that, that band were like, oh, do you know what? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll write something that like, I'll start writing, I'll write a hardcore song and send it in here. It's like, what fucking reach do I have? Who gives a shit? Write stuff for yourself. If someone doesn't like it, be like, yeah, cool, whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you pointed it out, Ed. Fair play. Okay. Uh, fifth and final track is Apogean, Apogean Tide, Revolution is a Fallacy. So that's Sam Ellis, the guitarist and composer from Irish metal band The Linkus. So he started a solo project. Uh, Rory from Linkus, the drummer, is helping him out with some of the drums, programming, etc. So it's progressive metal, guitar driven, rhythmic melodies, and you know, he is hoping, Sam, to kind of start moving into the kind of sound production side of things as well. Um, so he's done everything by himself. It's a solo project, and he's currently going to be releasing a single every couple of months. So this song is uh, Revolution is a Fallacy. <laughs> Yeah. quite happy <laughs> yes uh, Daniel that was fucking class yeah unreal loved it loved the vocals um, it reminded me of Slipknot volume 3 around that era and that's high praise um, mm -hmm. yeah really really liked this um, really looking forward to hearing more from them as well yeah uh, Ev yeah <laughs> Fuck me, like, as in, mm. I was, I'm a big Alinkus fan. The first gig Worn Out ever played was with uh, Godmother and Alinkus. Uh, Chris from Alinkus got up and did a tune with us on the Dublin gig of the last tour. Sam is, like, a ridiculously good songwriter. And Rory, I know the drums are programmed, but, like, if... The only thing I can say is if if they can get like it, it to do live because yeah this stuff is sick it's so good and like Sam I know right well you're gonna you're listening this is sick to release stuff online over and over that is absolutely incredible my only thing for me is like if this was the middle of COVID it'd be different but like I am dying to see this live. I want to see, uh, I want to see them, and I want to see Zora together, and I want to make it happen. And also, if Rory's not around, I guarantee you Tom will be able to play this, and he'll fucking nail it. But oh my god, if this is done live, because I know Sam isn't going to just do like a half arse version. This really could be like, do you know, like in a couple of years we'll look back and be like, oh, do you remember they reviewed it on this? It's like this would be 
incredible. And I feel like Tom Woodlock would be the drummer. Poor Tom's uh, t- like the, the Irish. The repertoire. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah like look, the Irish drummer. Look, the, boy every deserves band. Get, the boy deserves to get paid, but he's the man to do this. And I feel like if he if if Sam can get a band together to do it, <laughs> oh my God, this would this would literally just I wouldn't I, I it would blow my mind like I would well, love to see this like okay because you the next episode of the Metal Cell podcast is with Sam Ellis so. I know and I couldn't make it because I had to bring yeah. a PA from Crack Jenny's back to Blackpool Joe are you as enthusiastic. Not really my cup of tea. Sipping <laughs> <laughs> on his trooper beer. Your thing. <laughs> Poor yeah. Joe has having a hard time, but lately, I, look, Joe, I'm on, I can only play about what oh, I'm I get it. Like, I get it. It's probably, isn't it like a sign, though, that like a lot of the younger people are making more modern music? You know, it's, there's less of a culture. Maybe 10 years ago, there was a lot of people trying to set up, you know, more tradish bands, be it like new metal or new wave of British heavy metal. A lot of people doing stuff nowadays are focusing on modern music for younger people, you know. So it's like, music for drummers, probably, like it is. It's time, like, all time signatures and groove. That's what it is. But see, the thing that I don't really like about that is like I, I love drums, you know. And the thing that really, really pisses me off about a lot of this kind of tempoless kind of like, well, it is, it obviously has a beat, but you know, whatever weird beat it's in. I don't. I find that the whatever symbol action is going on is always really just fucking mundane. Crash or China keeping yeah, some the, shit. The drums like, are programmed like, on this though. Yeah, like there's never people doing like hi hats that are as dynamic as what the kick and you know snare is. So I'd like to see more of that. And again, the riffs like it's just like here's some syncopated parts, you know, and that's, mm. that's not like for me. But the vo- uh, vocals were really cool with the effects on it, and it. It definitely had a bit of a kind of Maynard in per- perfect yeah. circle kind of balls about it. I feel like it was actually like uh, if Very Alex so. James and Gojira or yeah. uh, kind of that, like I could hear the the first time I heard it, I was like, fuck, I'd love if he did like with the vocals more melody. Mm. He used, yeah. like Sam uses a lot more melody with the screaming part and that might be coming from a confidence in his voice. But if he used the same, like he, there was melody or rhythmical things in the... Um, screaming part that I'd like to see instead of the uh, yeah like I, d- I don't think I think that he, like he he's doing like the vocals and stuff I thought were like inventive and different which is great but I think that with like there's a lot of bands out there like the police and stuff like that who managed to have really insane drumming and also really characterful guitar playing and the problem with that sort of guitar my life. Thing is it's just all those guitars are just like down tuned open syncopated riffs and like there's so much more that they could be doing you know yeah um listen uh yeah yeah you're spot on i can understand where you're coming with from that side of things joe as well but uh yeah exciting times man for for that uh project the same way would i be wrong in the same way as it's saying uh there's other things that death metal drummers can do other than blast beats do you mean i feel like it falls into that thing as in I, i totally get what you're saying but that's where, like, that's where great music comes from. Like, if they, ha- if you got like a band who were doing like Morbid Angel or Cannibal Corpse style death metal, and got like an ACDC t- style drummer or someone who really knew how to like a-, a rhythm and a beat, like I think that something like that would be cool. It's just whenever stuff gets so, it's like thrash music. Like if you just keep playing the same yeah, beat yeah, all the time, yeah. it loses it. You know, yeah. so- it's very easy to do a parody of a style of music if you have a drum track of yeah. that music. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a brief discussion on cash versus cashless at festivals, gigs, and um, it's becoming a thing. I suffered the problem of it in a Damnation Festival when I went over to the merch tent to buy stuff. It was they were looking for cash. Um, I also suffered um, at the siege as well when i joined the queue at the siege to buy merch and then war got through the queue because there was a, a quite a quite a big queue at the time that they were taking cash so literally had to jump out of the queue run up to the bar and was only given 50 pound notes so well, to be fair the, with ba- the, siege, the bar staff they, were they did off. well i know i know i know yeah, i know yeah. but like still You've got other things on your mind. Life is fucking going on when you're trying to do shit and arrive there and just 
see the merch in case you know the panic the usual panic oh fuck the merch yeah, is going to yeah, sell yeah. out so you join and then go shit yeah you need cash so so it's just um a situation that i think is going to will it affect yeah. bands um, in the long run especially when people don't tend to carry cash especially young people don't tend i never have cash on me ever carry cash whereas myself um, and joe always had I have a few, but it's just actually There's getting many, more many difficult. Nights, I'm sure you would remember going to a gig and trying to keep 20 quid to buy a t-shirt at the end of the night and then spending yeah. it on drink and stuff. Yeah, yeah. From a band's point of view, it's definitely better because um, people want to just go out and enjoy their night and stuff and they don't need to worry about, like, at the end of the day, beep and stuff. But also, you have to remember that a lot of bands have to try and operate some of their profits under the table, you know, so they don't want to be declaring everything. And everything that's going through your sum up or whatever is going to be declared. So square up is what I use, and you know, I I use it for worn out and dead cult and the amount of people. But, that Henry, I, have you had the situation? This has happened to us a few times where, like, say at the end of a night, and you're getting tons of people are coming up, so you're doing tons and tons of transactions because you're doing them so quickly. You can get one that'll come through and say a field, and you might notice. No, it. See, this is the thing. I made that mistake the first time ever. I will hold someone. Like, this is the other thing. It depends on the venue. Fred's upstairs can be an absolute fucking nightmare for connection. Uh, so I tend not to use card in Fred's, unfortunately. But we'll say in Sinead in Dublin, I'll be there chatting away at someone. We're like, yeah, cool. I have all my stuff on my phone. Uh, prices and everything. Check out. Boom. I have I don't have the card reader with me. It's a small little square. It's a square up that I have. And someone just goes tap and by like by the time you've said thank you so much, like we because we do, we really appreciate it. It comes up approved and I'm like, yeah, cool. It you know, it I feel like if bands now don't look into getting some kind of card machine, like you really have to like the square square up. I know there's sum up is the other one, but I use square up and this thing is like out of the box. Download an app, put in your details, your payout details. I guess the only downfall really is how much is it know, to buy the machine itself? Much, maybe if I remember 30, 40, something. Wow, like really I can't remember. It's, it's really not that much. The only thing is, like, when you're on a tour, um, as payment processors will do, it will take three or four business days for it to hit your account. So, you know, it's not going to pay your petrol on that day. But if you're touring regularly, you're going to get regular income from mm -hmm. it. And it, it bulks it by hour. And, you know, like every day, it'll pay out the next thing. But I guess... The advice I would say to people is don't, at the minute, don't assume everyone has a card, but bands yeah. get a card machine. Like, it's just a tiny little square. It's so easy to use. But maybe in like three years, three, four years, everyone's like, oh, well, of course they have a card machine. We got fucked a little bit. <laughs> we played over in the UK. I brought my card machine like the little tap thing and you can only use it in the country that you bought it in. And I didn't uh. know that. So what we did was we have like on our merch, there's a scan thing. So if you have PayPal, you can scan oh, and, and it goes straight to our PayPal because it was one of those oh, things. That's that, great. Like, the amount of times you'd be talking to someone and there could be a line if you're not shit at, like if we didn't play a shit gig there could be a line of people that are like yeah cool I'll take this this you want it to have as easy and quick as possible that like even I'll be straight up with you like my head sometimes if I'm trying to how you price your merch sometimes my head will just explode like you know after playing a gig if someone goes oh I'll buy something for 10 or something for 15 uh that thing for 13 um and actually can i also get another thing for 13 and then one more thing for 10 and you're like <laughs> sure it's like what do you think it's worth you're literally being like <laughs> the amount of times that you're like 
It was like someone gives you money and you're like, oh, no, do you know what? Fuck it. I'll give you it for this much. And they're like, that's still, it's more than what it's actually worth. And I'm like, oh, well, look, you, my head's fucked. My head is literally <laughs> fucked. Like, I can't, I can't just be like, yeah, cool. What's your opinion on it, Daniel? Um, well, like, it's, it's whatever suits bands, really, at the end of the day. But as, as a punter, um, I never have cash on me ever. Like, I, 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 but I haven't even, I left my bank card at a friend's house in April and I only got a new one two weeks ago. Um, and I've survived. I've just, um, just tapped my phone. That's all I do. Okay. Um, but I did try to get merch at the siege and I knew it was cashless, but I knew that they'd do, um, cash back. But oh when God. I went to the bar, they weren't doing it for some reason. I was like, can I get cash back? Um, yeah. Maybe they seen the cut of me and were like, for her own good, don't give her <laughs> cash back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, like personally, like I'll always be delighted when I see cashless there. I thought when you meant this um, topic, when you put it into the group chat, Richie, I thought you meant like cashless wristbands at festivals. No. No. But, that's, um, that's, a, that's another... The ticket Another top. Is the cash, like yeah. Joe, yeah. um, you're, I think you're they're, better. they're both better though, like kind of in the sense that like wristbands and being able to tap all that stuff is way better than some festivals in Europe, like grass pop and stuff. You have to buy tokens yeah. or like even smaller ones where you're like going up buying tokens, and it's a whole fucking rigmarole that you could do without, you know. But see, the yeah. thing is, and um, when you have a tap facility and like everything else especially con considering the person that's using the card and the condition they're in quick boom done don't yeah. have to <laughs> you're kind of waking up the next day yeah, and boom. checking frantically your account and then going what the fuck where yeah. where's the t-shirts i bought or how many drinks yeah. am i after yeah. paying at that like, price I have so many mates who have done that like you know who've yeah. gone to a gig or completely polaxed like bought three t-shirts Mm. And like vinyl, and the, like you know, spent it's hundreds of in the merch stand, and the next day it left them on the train, or you know, yeah. yeah. But that again, that's a that's an occupational hazard. That's yeah. them. of course it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just think it's interesting that it's it's really speeding up the whole process of getting rid of money. Full stop. It's very quick, man. It really does. Like I'm thinking, like the amount of times even like paying into a gig was like, do do you take card? If you take card, even just the, because you get guys that like are not used to bands being able to take card that they like, you know, talk the big talk being like, oh, I love that. I only have card. I'm like, sick. I can take every single fucking card in your pocket and I'll never give it back. And they're like, and I've seen it before where it's they're like, like someone's not them. used to it and they're like, oh, they're, like you have to buy it. It's like, I know you have no interest in buying this, but. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah talk I, shit I think, um, I think they'll end up being a backlash about it you know because as much as people find it like is going to be totally handy bands in the long run are going to end up end up finding that they're making less money you know especially like big, bigger bands are having to end up reporting stuff where like bands on tour like motorhead or whoever back in the day a lot of their merch and stuff would just be going into the petrol tank or per diems yeah, for the crew and stuff like that. that stuff that goes, yeah. you know, was never entering into the fucking tax system. Whereas, mm -hmm. like New York, whenever card became a big, massive thing, everywhere took it. And then it went through a phase where loads of bars didn't want to take it because of the same thing. They and didn't you're getting to uh, bank from. charges for using your card as well. Yeah, but like we'll say, oh, right, okay. I don't want to be giving out like fucking prices or whatever but i think it was either dublin or cork and it gives like the list because um siege was cash but like to be honest with the amount that we sold for both those gigs even on the card like if someone's going to give out about the like percentage that well square up is what i use whatever man as in like yeah not a butter if it, if it stops people doing this, being like, yeah, I'll actually, I'll, I'll, I'll pay for someone to not do that or like lie to me 
saying like, oh, I'll be back there in a second. I'll be back there in a second. You won't be back in a second. You tap, you're done, whether you remember it or not. Yeah. But look, I mean, I had the problem then in, in, with architects um, trying to get merch off them in Fred's upstairs because, as you architects. said yourself, what? You archives. absolutely 100% did not see <laughs> architects. Fuck's <laughs> Archives. Archives, yeah, yeah. There is no fucking way you saw architects in Fred's. I was like, oh, no way. Can I continue, please? <laughs> anyway, so I was trying to buy archive t-shirts in uh, Fred's upstairs and the lads were trying to use the tap system. I think they had the same setup as you and of course there was no um, signal and um, then they said look no hassle why don't we just try PayPal and that didn't fucking work either so it's ultimate... Fred's. Fred's is actually cursed it doesn't want yeah. anyone to make any money ever. So it's just something to remember in Fred's upstairs that if you're a band uh, you won't get much of a signal up there uh, so I think in the end I had to go Bouncer out. and Fred actually owes me money for a fucking dead cult t-shirt. Yeah, okay. you think I'm sure he'll crazy. listen to this now and be like, I'm oh, sure yeah, Evan I bet won't he... forget anyway. So Oh no, I won't. I'll be there on the there 26th. So yeah. you know. But uh, Joe, would you rather have a roll of cash in your pocket going into a gig? Or would you just have yeah, your from card? A, from a punter point of view, card is probably handier just because you know what it's like. Yes, sir. Uh, from, from a band point of view, I think you need to be flexible and be able to do both because you will end up places where you don't have the internet or people have cash. So, um, yeah. And like, as I said, there's so much of like that merch money. If it's in cash and bands have it on tour, they're going to be putting it into petrol and stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. It'll, I think all this stuff about cash disappearing full stop, it's not going to happen. You know, people, people need oh, it'll it never for happen. No. various reasons. As long as petrol stations take cash, it'll never happen. Mm. <laughs> I hope it never happens yeah. because. But I think all the big festivals um, are kind of going that way now, where they prefer to take cash less. In Ireland, was I didn't fucking have cash once, just throw it, uh, tap on the card. Yeah, and we all saw where that fucking went with the re with the guys, the vendors that were selling food. Yeah. Um, I think they might have been from England or, or, or Northern Ireland, one or two, and they were they the Irish prices up, but yet they were charging English prices for the food. I and people it. didn't know about it until the next day when they looked at their bank card, saw that they were charged ten pounds for yep. a burger instead of ten euros. Or I'm just saying, it was probably a lot more than that. But yeah, Grim. <laughs> I work for a payment processor as well, so it's like. Mm. I like there's so many ins and outs of things but yeah so for small gigs around town bring maybe just bring some cash with you just in case um, always for the bigger bring, the bigger venues to be sure the bigger venues yeah. the three arenas and all them I would say the majority of them you'll be able to get your merch cashless part of the thing is like a lot of places that you be playing regardless like people are arriving in taxis and stuff like that and unless you're in a big city or actually there's no country uh, there's nowhere in Ireland the Taxi drivers in Dublin or Belfast, neither of them will take card. You can pre-book them. They don't. But... Yeah, you can pre-book. And that's it. Like, so, the amount yeah. of times I've been like, can you... Unless you're card? getting an Uber or something into town, if you're in Galway yes, or, sure, or, yeah. or a lot of places, you're paying cash yeah, for the yeah. taxis and you're going to end up having cash about, like, you know. So. Mm. But I think that's a good reason why it's important for bands to have, like, items under five quid. Like, if you can do lighters or can openers or anything like that, that people can throw shrapnel at, then great, like, you know. Yeah, okay. be careful how you do. If you're doing merch as well, uh, don't have shit for like 12 euro, 13 euro, because all you're going to do all night is run around looking for change, being like going up to the bar, being like, oh, do you change for this? Then you're going to get shit mixed up. It's... Yeah, not bad. Okay, I hope that helped people who are watching and listening there. Thanks again, everybody, for one on the show, Evan, Danielle, and Joe. Much hey, appreciated. Man. Thanks, lads. And uh, shout out again for a new sponsor. I won't be doing this at the end of the show, but shout out for a new sponsor again, Rising Sons Brewery in Cork. And crucially, support your local metal scene. Thank you. Thank you.